everyone, and welcome back to another Adobe Live in the UK here at lunchtime. Yes, yes, it's myself and the Tim Say in the room. So how are you doing? It's it's so weird. I can see you. <laughs> Come on. Yeah. Don't do that. <laughs> it's so strange, isn't it? This is just like really, really freaky. But still good. So I'm over here doing a bit of filming and popping in every day to do Adobe Live this week, which is really good fun. How did you how do you like Munich? Do you like it? I love it. What's your holiday? It's really, really lovely. Oh. It's nice to have a little bit of a break though from all the wandering around, especially over the last couple of days. It's been really <laughs> hot. <laughs> Out there, very, very warm. So it's kind of nice. And it's of course great to be here with you. Well, thank you very much. And of course, hi to everyone who's watching in yes. the chat today. Let's see who do we have here. Okay, we have Sandrine. Let's actually have a better idea. How about I just do this? I said I do this. No. Try that one. There you go. No. No, not working today. No, oh, there we are. There we yes. Are. <laughs> we have Angus and Caroline and Doris and Garrett and Galana and Jeffrey and Kirsty and Linda and Oliver and Sandrine and Sean and Stuart and Tessa and Tony. Yeah, I'm here too. But no, Tim, I haven't even said hi yet. Hi. <laughs> there we are. <laughs> there we are. And Joe is joining. Harmony is restored. Hopefully with better audio today. I know we had some issues yesterday, but hopefully that, that should be resolved today. So let us know if you have any issues because I don't have my headphones. On right now. I know it's so strange. We've anyway, got our headphones here, but we're having we're using our actual ears. Yeah, uninterrupted. To talk First to time you can see them on stream. Oh no, wacky. <laughs> <laughs> right. Okay. So, um, what are we doing today? So we are continuing our Adobe Live titles uh, styled referencing uh, the 2006 uh, Bond film Casino Royale. That's what we were looking at. Lovely. Yesterday, we started to build some of the assets, mainly strokes uh, and whatever yesterday. We'll continue doing a bit of that in a while. But I think you're going to start us off, aren't you, today with the, with That's the animations? That's right. Because the, because the good news today is we have 90 minutes. 90 minutes. Yes. yes. Tomorrow, two hours. Unless, of course, a certain person forgot to change that. So, Emma, perhaps you can have a quick look if you're watching. <laughs> <laughs> just, just checking we actually have 90 minutes 90 today. Minutes. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, Sandrine has a question for me. She well, does. Go on. on. In the meantime, I will just get my After Effects ready. So hopefully if I tap on this. Yeah, there we go. Oh. We're down in the corner. Look, it's like we're in a little window actually in our After Effects. It's, it's amazing. And it also looks like I don't have any, I'm not wearing anything. Like it's yeah, it looks like we're both just floating around. I feel like. <laughs> <laughs> but so it's good. nice in here. Like, nice and roomy. It is, yeah. Love it. Anyway, floating heads. There we go. Yes. Um, is there a light mode for After Effects? Do you know? Uh, you can change the interface in the preferences, yeah. Well, I'm not going to. No, good, <laughs> because it's it's this way for a reason. Okay, right. Um, How do you call a track that is synced to an image as in a showreel? That sounds like a setup to a joke. I'm waiting for the punchline. Yeah. Um, how do you call a track that is synced to an image? Do you mean like the audio track? Um, well, there's a click, oh, there's a click no. track. Yeah, it could be the click track. Or I think... Um, no, I think I, I think I know what she means. Or set to cuts. Uh, yeah, mm. I think I, I think you would just call it. You cut to a beat. That's, yes. Cut unless, to beat. yeah. Unless, of course, you mean you want to sync your video to audio, like a clapperboard. That way. That's also a way. Um, yeah. But so then that relates back to the click track. So, yeah. I don't know. Let yeah. us know. Yes, let us know. Anyway, right, right then. Cool. We are in After Effects, um, and uh, what today I would wanted to do is I would like to um, do the, the spiral, which starts at the beginning of the, uh, the stream of the um, intro. Yeah. And uh, I was thinking that yeah, we could do it manually and by hand. But be that's a job. that's like a lot. If you have like fifty or sixty of those mm -hmm. things just flying out, that's a lot. So let's yes. um. Let's find a cool way for us to make it automatically and hopefully uh, reusable so we can use it for anything else we want, like we will do later today. Right, okay, so let's get started. I will create a new composition, of course, and I will name this one um, Spiral. Cool. Hi, Alex, by the way, in the chat there. Hello. Our colleague from France. And I will get my assets ready because Tony was so very kind and he has prepared 
some assets for me. I will import those as, this is important, a composition and not footage because I don't want the layers to be merged. Okay, there we are. And now I have my footage over here. So if I open this folder, there they are. And I think I can, let's start with After Effects because yes, why not? we're there. <laughs> we're there already. Yep. Okay, let's bring that in. Alex has put on his sunglasses, by the way. If I, if I do the same, actually most of my head's going to disappear then. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, do not worry, um, these are not in color. Those are black and white, so yep. you should be fine. We're good, yes. <laughs> right, okay. So, um, the way I, will want, I want to do this is, I first of all, want to use the anchor point. Yeah. We will scale this one and we will rotate it. So if you, do we have the original, do you have a, do you have a screenshot of the original? Uh, we've got, actually, in the files that you've got there, there is, um, so if you go back to the files and then just do a quick look on the Casino Royale AI file. So there are some screenshots just there that you could quickly look at, but they're, they're no good. So you'd want the Casino Royale one. Where is it? Uh, it should be. Have you added oh, it? No. Was it the Adobe Royale? Uh, no, no, it's definitely Casino Royale. That All one, right. Anyway, it doesn't matter. We'll see it, how it works anyway. Or we can flick over to mine and I'll pop it on screen if yeah. you like. For, Do it. Yeah, there we go. So here we are. This is the actual spiral yeah. just yeah. here around there. Okay, and that then um, goes out to this kind of array here, so it becomes a much more multi-layered exactly. background with several from there. So there you go. All right, back to my screen. Here we are. Cool. So let's start off with this. I will first of all move this one just a bit more up. You're holding the Shift key, of course, and making sure that it snaps to the vertical axis. And then I take the pan behind or the anchor point tool. And I can also click this, and by also holding down the Shift key, I'm making sure that this one also goes only vertically. So how about like this? It doesn't really matter how far I can drag it. I put it over here or here. Yep. Since we will move this one later anyway, it doesn't really matter. Okay, so I will put it right here, let's say, and that's great. So the way it's going to work is we will first create this motion that we will uh, then replicate um, with one instance, and then we can hopefully, with some clever expressions and yep. tricks, um, create an easy way for us to Ooh. spin that all around, and hopefully with some delay and some fun and some sliders and some expressions, it's gonna be great. Oh, I'm looking but, forward to this. Well, so am I, because yes. this is the second time I'm doing this. <laughs> okay, so let's get this um, ready. First of all, I would like to modify the scale Right. So let's just click on that, and I will enable this. And I think we should start right around Teeny -weeny. here, maybe. Yeah. And then it should, after like, I don't know, two seconds, three seconds, maybe. We'll see about that later in a moment. Yeah. It will just jump out like that. And, of course, we could ease that because that's fun. So Absolutely. function and F9, or if you're on a normal keyboard, just the F9 key. And now you will see those key frames have transitioned to the um, eased version. So if we play that back, well, that's quite slow actually, but that's all right. That's kind of nice though, because in the movie, it is actually a little bit drifty. It's not as harsh as that, so it's kind of good. Yeah. Okay. And now, of course, what we also want is we want maybe to uh, change the opacity. So yeah. I hit T for opacity or transparency. <laughs> transparency, yeah. And we will start with it at zero most likely. Yeah. Of course, don't forget to keyframe that. Yeah. And I will hit U so we can see both of them at the same time. Yeah. And I will just scrub to the next one. There we go. And set that one also to zero because I do want to fade it out. And in the middle, somewhere maybe here, I will set it to 100%. And of course, ease that again. And this will leave us with something like this. Do you know, your stream on keyframes a while back actually inspired me to make sure that I review what I know about keyframes yeah. every now and then. Because I work in Illustrator most days, After Effects just a few times a week. I sometimes just forget 
and I review these things. Your 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 uh, stream that you did on that, so I thought, you know, I need to keep reviewing that just to get these things. <laughs> just so worthwhile. And I think it would be a good idea for us just to move on over to the other side because in a moment I think we will do some work and our camera could potentially cover what we're doing. So let me just bring us jump over, over there. To the other you can side. tell I've been working outdoors for the last few days, can't you? <laughs> there we are. I'm super orange. <laughs> oh dear. Right, okay. Cool. So now let's just do one thing. Let's just duplicate that and we can see of course looks exactly the same and this object already has some transparency on it so um, that's why we saw a difference all right okay so now let's take the rotation of this one and just bring that over I don't know how about just just for giggles right about here okay okay so so far so good right yeah. And we could take this and we can move it over. Of course, no, not like that. We're using the move tool, Tim. There we are. Okay. Okay. Yeah, 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 yeah right, yeah, right, right. I like right. that. But the issue, of course, now is for two objects. That's easy, right? Okay. Just have to do it twice. But yeah. let's say I want 20 or 30 or 50. Ooh, yeah. do, do we really want to sit here and do, okay, do please? It's going to be layered in. And, yeah. and of course, rotate, don't forget that. Yeah. By the way, Oliver thinks I've been in a spray booth. <laughs> <laughs> Might just be the color temperature yeah. of the lights. Munich spray tan. I... <laughs> <clears throat> right. <laughs> so let's not do that. No. Let's not um, do it that way, because there's a much better way and hopefully more flexible way for us to do it. Yeah. Using expressions. Yay! Yes. Not okay. Like this. So. Let's create a new layer, call that one, well, let's just use an, uh, null object, doesn't matter. This will just be our layer where we will put some controls on it. So it doesn't really matter what layer this could be a adjustment layer. I would just use a null object because I like them. And we can call this one control or controls. We will put some sliders on it, which we will use in just a moment. And we could even make this a guide layer, which doesn't really matter because null objects, of course, they don't render. So no, we don't need to do anything, but we could. Okay, so first thing I, first thing I want to do is I want to automate the rotation of the um, layers. So in theory, it should be then really easy for me just to duplicate the layers and create automatic rotation all around. Okay. So that's our first um, goal. Okay. The way we're going to do that is we will have a look at expressions. So, and if you don't know what expressions are, then um, name the control layer M. Nice, Joe. Oh, yes. Yeah, Someone a good is paying idea attention. In my joke, by <laughs> I'm just going to name it M, but I'm still going to keep the controls because otherwise yeah. I will forget what M actually means. Yeah. <laughs> Someone's paying attention. I like it, Joe. They are very good. Okay. Cool. So let's do that. Um, the way we're going to do it is I will hold down the Option key and click on the stopwatch. Yes. Now it's going to turn red. And usually red means something bad, but in this case it doesn't. It's, it's just red. You know, it's fine. Yeah. So I'm going to keep that. We're going to delete the text that's already in there. We don't need that one. And now let's use my favorite ever tool, the um, Pick Whip or the Property Pick Whip. Yes. Don't ever say that while you're eating. No, very bad. <laughs> it can go very wrong. <laughs> Pleasure to meet you. Um, <laughs> right. And we're going to take that um, pick whip and source it from the rotation of the layer below. And to also show the rotation, I will hold down the shift key and tap R. So now it has added the rotation to my open keyframes. Otherwise, if I just were to hit R, we just see the rotation, but I want both, yeah. so um, I can also type U if I want. Okay, rotation. Okay. So let's take this rotation, drag it all the way down, and parent it. I don't really like the word parent because it's not really, it's just linked. Yeah. But in theory, it's also called parent. It kind of makes it se sense in a way in that the child objects follow yeah. around there. Yeah. yeah. And it's better than some of the other language that could be used, I guess, yeah, right, in right, right. instances. So. 
Okay. By the way, Sandrine says expressions used to freak her out. Those expressions in red. And I'm taking oh, yeah. it that she's got over that with watching your stuff. Well, same. Same, definitely. Yeah. Um, it does look like you've done something wrong, doesn't it? Red is generally an indicator of danger or stop for. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Okay. okay. Go on. So, now, I, let's just have a quick look at this expression. Even though we have talked about this in the stream before, I think it's still worth just um, quickly having a look at what this means. Um, so, this property pick whip essentially is just a shortcut for you to type this in or to not type this in rather because um, I can never remember for the life of me what I should put in so I just use the property pick whip but if I wanted to I could just could have typed that in myself all right yeah. and this means in this composition which we're in right now um, find the layer with this name which is it happens to be uh, that one mm -hmm. and take the rotation property and just set it to the same. So let's have a look. Yep, indeed, the rotation is set to 0, 0.0. And yeah, it's the same. Who would have thought? But now we can do some maths or math to it, depending on if you're joining us from the UK or the US. I'm with the Americans on that because either way works because it's an abbreviate, a shortening of a perfectly long word, mathematics. <laughs> so you yeah. can have it either way, I think. There you go. Yeah. All right, so um, I would just say we will add a number, in this case plus, and let's say about, I don't know, 20 degrees. Could be anything. Cool. And you did help Sandrine, by the way. Nice. Just to confirm. Now let's check out what happened. First of all, we see the object has rotated. That's yeah. great. And by how many degrees? Well, if we... I'm guessing 20. <gasps> yes, indeed, 20. That's right. Fantastic. So that's good. Sums. <laughs> Caroline. <laughs> Brill. But, um, you know, I have two issues with that. First yeah. of all, if we want to add like another object, we can duplicate that one. But then we would go, had to go uh, in here and let me just open the expression. And now we would have to change this to 40. Right. And okay. then again, like that's not great, is it? No. No. no, there must be a way, surely, that you can yeah, get one yeah, yeah. to get a value from the other and change it. And there is. We've, cool. we've checked that out in the um, uh, other expressions stream I did, where yeah. we talked about pie charts. And instead of referencing a layer by its name, like we did here, we can reference a layer by its index. Ooh. And the index, if you don't know what it is, that's just the number right here. We have one, two, and three. So how could we possibly, if we are on layer two, how could we get to layer three? Plus one. Plus one, yeah. yeah. We just take the layer we're on right now, two, add one, we get three, and there we go. We have the layer right below us. Perfect, all right. So instead of having this, I would just take out all that, and I would just say index plus one. Nice. And in theory, nothing should change now if I click OK. Great, that means we have done everything right. Because now, if I duplicate that, Check that out. Oh, hey. This, now if you don't know why that is happening, this layer now says, okay, take the index two, make it, uh, uh, add one, and pass three, it on. and take yeah. that one. But this one, this layer also doesn't know the rotation, so this one asks essentially the next one, like, layer four, what's, my, what's your rotation? Layer four says, I don't know, what's layer five's rotation? <laughs> and layer five says, I don't know. But at some point, eventually, we will land down here, and layer 20, in this case, happens to know that, oh, my rotation is zero, because this one does not have an expression linked to rotation. Yeah. So that's an easy way for us to that is so cool. bring that in. But Maddie loved your stream, by the way, the expression stream, oh, which she was on it. She was raving you. about it <laughs> all week. But we're not done yet. Because now, let's say the client comes along and says, yeah, you know what, um, that's great, but I would wish we don't have this overlap here. Okay. Ooh, how right. are you going to get around that? Yeah, because now if we had like this duplicated all the time, we would have to go into like every expression and say, all right, okay, rotation. Uh, okay, maybe the client wants 25. Okay, 25. Next one. That's not great. Ooh, you would have I, to go I know where you're going to go, I them. think. So let's not do that. Can I hazard a guess? Go, go on. Are you going to do a division operation against the number? No. No? Ooh. Much, much less interesting. <laughs> okay. 
Remember our, our favorite layer M? Yes. Right. M's in charge. What if we just add an uh, expression control to that layer? Okay. Like a slider or an angle control. Yeah. And then we can change it all at once. Oh. Yeah, right. do that. Right. I like that one. By the way, Oliver's asking, yeah. what does the little I was here cartoon face like icon mean? That's a shy layer. Ah. That one. Essentially what it means if, if See, like you have a project that you want to, actually it's, you know what? We, we shall use that one in a moment. <laughs> that shows how much attention I pay to that icon because yeah. to me it looks like a space invader. <laughs> I just realized it is that Chad. It's the nose pointing over the top of the wall. Yeah. Being shy. Kilroy was here. Like, yeah, I, I, <laughs> I honestly thought it was a space invader. I thought, why is shy layer a space invader? <laughs> right. That's brilliant. Anyway. Right. Okay. Uh, we will, I will show you what shy layer means, Oliver, in just a moment. This stream is scripted. <laughs> I wish it was. Oh, there you go. Yeah, I know, yeah. <laughs> what do you say, hovering art director to that? Think bigger, but keep it simple. Oh, See? yeah, I like that. <laughs> See, there you go. All right. Okay, so let's hop on over to our control layer and let's add our very first. I've turned it off. <laughs> no, no, I was just getting him to nod. Go on, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. There we go. Okay, okay. I'll stop now. Um, let's add an angle control to this one. <laughs> go on then. And let's call that one, well, angle is already a pretty, pretty good name, but let's call that one rotation. Offset. Yes. Okay, so now instead of saying 20 over here, we can just take our pick whip, drag it all the way here on the angle. By the way, not the rotation offset, you have to uh, focus it on the um, actual property. Yeah. And now you can see the pick whip has done all the hard work for us. It said, like, oh yes, so control good. layer M, yeah, yeah, rotation offset angle, yeah, there we are. And now, if I take this and rotate it. There you go. Oh, that is so much easier. And watch this. <sighs> this one is really satisfying. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, but we're not done yet. All right, so let's take. And of course, you can keyframe that as well, can't you? you can... Yeah? yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right? Yeah. Isn't that cool? Yeah, yeah. Okay. That's brilliant. But it's going to get better. Yeah. Because um, right now, let's just keep it at two because I don't want to delete and uh, uh, show them all the time. Right now, we still have an issue because they are appearing at the very same time. And if we just, if we were to rotate it all the way around, we would get a circle and that circle would then push out. We yeah. will need that one in a moment. Yeah. But not right now. Right now, okay. I want a spiral. So let's think about this. Okay. We need, like, the element here yeah. should be triggered via delay, like it should be a delayed action. So yeah. we need to delay the scale yeah. and the opacity. Yeah. Those two options we have to delay. Yeah. Right, okay, so let's do that. Um, I will go into the opacity, and right now, and let's, let's also add the um, scale too, so we can see. Right now, they are handled via keyframes. Yeah. We could do this, that works. Yeah. But let's not do that. It's not very elegant, though, is it? No, it's no. not really. And like I said, it's not dynamic. Mm -hmm. And we would have to do it for every single keyframe. So yeah. let's not do that. Instead, I will be bold. I will delete them. <gasps> oh, I Adventurous. Know. Adventurous. And we're going to turn to what else, of course, but expressions. By using the, let's just make sure we're not covering anything. There we yeah. are. By using the property pick whip, again, yeah. I will take this, parent it to the scale. And take that. No, let's actually not, let's not do that for a moment. You will okay. see why in a moment. Right. Okay. okay. So if I open the scale expressions again, you will see property pick whip to the rescue. It has added our very first, well, not very first, but for this layer, very first uh, scale expression. Yeah. Again, the issue we don't want to reference this layer by name. We want to do it by the index. So we say index, just like the other one, plus one. We always want to reference the layer below the current one. Yeah. If we wanted, by the way, to reference the layer above, we would say minus one. Minus one. Yeah. But we don't, so let's do it that way. Scale, right. But now we want to delay that. Yeah. So we will use a very clever expression. We will use dot, 
value at time. Right. So this essentially says, take the value, but not right now, but from a different point in that layer, like maybe from a second earlier. So where was this layer a second before this happened? Wow. Or maybe so it's after. time traveling. Really. It's time traveling. Yeah. Right? Okay. And of course, we need to know by how much. This um, value is in seconds, so I think I would just start with 0 0.1. And of course, whenever we have a value like this, we should really do a slider, so we'll make it dynamic. So let's do that by going back to the control layer, bringing in our um, slider. Let's use a slider for this one and call this one time offset. And our best friend, the property pick whip, is going to wow. once again. There we are. And now we should be almost good to go. Yeah. Stuart, by the way, is asking, is uh, well, two things. Sandrine is saying we shouldn't be put together in the ball pool <laughs> at McDonald's. <laughs> Probably wise. Um, and Stuart is saying, is there any documentation for expression code like value at time? There is, isn't there, on Adobe Help? There's a, there's a whole thing yeah, about expression, yeah, right? You can searchable. It's like a, an online document. So it grows as After Effect grows. OK. Now, we need to do the same thing for the opacity as well. But since I don't really want to copy the other way, we are very lucky because if we just switch out scale for opacity, then everything still works. Mm. Because the rest of the expression happens to be the same. So we can take all that, paste that in here, switch out the scale for opacity. And now we should see that everything should be working, which it is not. And now we have the great fun to see why it is not working. So let's just add a value. Could be After Effects that's calling this issue. What's well, sitting there, I can see it. Why is it not moving? Let's just make sure I did everything correctly. Okay. This comp layer index plus one. Yep, that looks right. Transform scale value at time. This comp layer dot controls. Yeah, that sounds about right. Okay. Let's just remove that one for the time being, just to make sure. Let's do a quick sanity check. What happens if we don't do it with a value at time? Now it's working. Okay, so yeah. so far so good. That's yeah, that's yeah. good. And now, in theory, it should just do. Maybe I've done. Um, I didn't capitalize it. Like value at because JavaScript and this is an extension of JavaScript. It's very particular yeah. on how you capitalize the letters. It's ECMA two six two. Gesundheit. There you go. <laughs> it doesn't didn't like that. Why not? Oh, we will find I think them. I know. Debugging is a great part of these streams, you know, because I... it shows that we all have things sometimes oh. you think, why doesn't it work? Debugging. I know what happened. Go on then. I know definitely what happened. After Effects actually did the thing we asked it to. Right, okay. Let, let me just show, what we, show Ooh, you what we did. Unravel. Not personally, of course, but I mean the mystery. Fine. <laughs> <laughs> and that's how Tim lost his job. Um, Stuart, right. is that what they call camel test? Camel casing. Yes, yeah. Stuart. Yeah. So what have we done? Well, essentially, we asked After Effects, like, take the value at the time, and what time? Well, the time we set the slider to. Yeah. So if we go over here, for example, it says, take the value at this time, like 1.0.1. .1. But if we move forward, it's still looking at the same time, because the slider, of course, it never changes. It always is 0.1. So After Effects is always looking at the time, 0 0.1, and it's always checking that value. Yeah. But, of course, we don't want to always look at value that's sitting right here. We want to just move it by a second back. Yep. So what we actually have to do is we have to say time minus that right. offset. Right, OK. We don't want no, to look no. at a static value. This is a static expression. This is yeah. always the same. No, yeah. we, don't. we want to look at the time minus or plus. Gotcha. If we want to go in the other direction, yep. that expression. So, 
we were almost correct. So let's just say time minus. I think I'm missing something right here. Our fix is not happy. May have annoyed after effects. It's exactly one argument. Yeah, I know. Yep. Let's try that one more time. And let's add the time in. Time minus. Now our fix should be happy. Yes, there we are. Yeah, we can see everything. Copy there. this. Yep. Change scale for opacity. And there we are. Now, in theory, it should work. Let's just set that to an offset like 0.4 seconds so we can see that. And there we are. Yeah, there we go. We got it. Yeah. OK. Now, oh, exciting. this, now all the hard work is done. We can now just duplicate that. There we are. However many times we want, doesn't really matter. And watch this. Oh, fix is not liking that. Okay, it takes a while to render. It's all right. Yeah. But you can see it spawning in those. Oh, that's perfect. Let's just watch it again. This time with feeling. There we are. Nice no. one. We can high five. But the best thing is now we can change it. Let's say, ooh, how about we want like a. Um, only four of them in four directions. So we could say an angle of 90 degrees. In theory, that should leave us with exactly four objects spinning in the different directions. Oh. Like one up, one left, one down, yeah, one right. Yeah, yeah. And if we set that delay to maybe only 0 0.1 or 0 0,1, we we'll get something like this. Mm. Maybe we want five, so that should be, what's 360 divided by five? That's 72, right? Yes. It's all right, Sandrine's saying that we're, uh, we're Adobe Live's answer to Morecambe and Wise, so she will understand this reference. My wife used to send, sell him his daily newspaper, Eric Morecambe. There we go. Anyway, moving on. So, yes, yeah, 72. Was that before or after your career as an elephant trainer? <laughs> uh, it would have been, yeah, so after the backing dance with Madonna, uh, astronaut. Yeah, it would, yeah, yeah, okay. yeah absolutely. All right, just one more thing because this is quite a small spiral and I really wanted to um, have them all the way going, going up like this and not just ending here. So I think we can get away if we just get rid of all those. Really? Fine. <laughs> Tim, you've made that look so, so easy. I think we would just um, add an anchor point expression and say like, yep, we'll start here. And it's just at the end, right around here, I think. Is it that one? Yeah. You can get so much done with animating the anchor point in uh, in After Effects. So many different things that you can do that people overlook it and just think, why is that even there? Or why is there a control press? Because it can do really useful stuff. Right. And now, this is the one time where I do have to copy this. Well, actually, do I? No, I actually don't. I also could just reference. Yeah, let's do that. <laughs> Doing it. Joe's saying, looks so good. Now get the whole thing spin. Uh, now get the whole thing spinning collectively. And of course, we want to do this. Oh, actually, we, we should do. We should do, uh, because the anchor point also has to be set. Uh, it has, has to be an offset. Because if we don't have an offset, like the last element, the anchor point would, would have already transformed if, before we could get to the last mm. objects. So yeah. we also need to offset that. So I just take the, um, let's, I don't know, take the rotation property, copy that, go into the anchor point. No, don't want to replace that. Thanks, After Effects. And just paste that. And luckily, because anchor point happens to work just the same as, oh, I've, I've copied the rotation. I should have copied the scale. That's better. Because the rotation has a different expression. The rotation is actually static, even though it doesn't look like yeah. it. Uh, anchor point. There we are. And there we go. And change. We don't want to change the scale. We want to change the anchor point. There we go. <laughs> Oliver's saying, telling Sandrine it's waiting for the Christmas show. We should do that in Austria. <gasps> I can hear the distant whirring of a stressed MacBook. Can you? 
<laughs> yeah, probably. <laughs> Is it mine? No, it's probably mine. I would just check, check for half for a moment. That's actually the audience applause. There you go, Joe. Whee! Doesn't it does not really like it. At home on my Windows computer, of course, it was just like this in real time. Okay, well, let's not do five. Let's change that to a number that doesn't really have anything to do with it. How about oh, look at that. Like that, maybe? That is so good. And of course, we can also change the time offset. If I hold down Command or Control, it should be, no, what's Command or Control? Was it Alt? Can't remember. Or was it Shift? No, Shift definitely not. I think it was Control to slow that down. I mean, yeah. Uh, yeah, how about. Yeah, let's just leave it at one. Yeah, there we go. All right, and I think with that, we have our very own spiral. Here we go. Takes a moment to render. Yeah, but look at that. My MacBook fans are not very happy about it. But once we have it, they'll get there. Once it's rendered, they'll love it. Wow. There we are. And of course, now the cool thing about this is we can replace this one and just duplicate it all over, over again. Um, and maybe, maybe we also. Oh, we want to talk about shy layers. Yes. Right. Okay. So um, let's say. Let's say I do want to share this with Tony, yeah. and I don't really trust him to um, properly work with this After Wise. Effects file. Yeah, <laughs> you know he will be confused by all the after by the yeah. um, all the layers, but Illustrator because I heard Illustrator's not really your the forte. Maths. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you can watch one of my Illustrator courses if you want. I'll tell you who did watch one of my Illustrator courses a few weeks back. It's Julianne Cost. She came to one of my classes. Well, there you go. So I was well chuffed. All right. So, shy layers. Yeah. If I hide all them, I call them, you will see this man thing. sort of yeah. hides behind the wall. And now the cool thing about this is if I now click on this, it hides all the layers. So, right? See that? Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. And this is how you can present your file to Tony now because now Tony sees, oh, it's just one layer. Easy. And this is how you to mystify me. Yeah. <laughs> and that's what shy layer does. Essentially, you can say which layers should be hidden when you click on that button. Yeah. That's all it is. And yes, I did send ring, just in case you're asking about uh, Julianne's Lightroom courses. Yes. These were live. It was live in person. She came along and sat in the audience. And of course I watched hers. I'd always watch Julianne's stuff. She's great. Right. Um, and Joe's saying, should the comp Precompose and spin in the opposite direction, so you've got more gain. Yeah, you can do that. Yeah, and of course now you see um, we didn't really hit the center of the composition. I could just take all that and just move it because we didn't touch the position. Yeah. So we can have it over here, right? We can also uh, add like a global rotation to everything via yeah. an expression if we want to. But Joe actually said a very good thing. Let's just do it like this. Let's. Oh no, not like that. <laughs> Let's just grab all that, put it roughly in the center. It doesn't really matter since we will rotate and position it anyway. And let's pre-compose all that. Yes. Pre-compose. We'll call that spinny thing. Click OK. And now we can take the rotation perhaps. And I won't use an expression right now because I don't care. <laughs> And there we are. But mm. we're running into one issue. Okay. See if you can spot it. Go again. Go again. So what? Well, they're all just moving at the same time. No. No. Ah, oh, of course the comp is yeah. Luckily, a very easy fix for that. We just have to go into our spinning thing composition, go into the composition settings, and make that one larger. Yeah. Let's say two thousand by two thousand. There you go. Fixed. Don't raise the bridge, lower the water. And there we are. Yep. And just to make it easy, because we are very far into our stream today anyway, and I want to leave some time for Tony, I can duplicate that. Oh, I like you doing all that, though. And it's real good. Perhaps put it over <laughs> here and offset that. And we don't need to do a fancy expression because we, I don't think we will need too many of those. 
that one over there. Not send it again. But it's love the fact that it's doing that and it's building that complexity slowly. I love that. And you know what's even better about this? Let's say, why don't you say to me this animation is too slow? Okay, this animation is too slow. Thanks for that, Tony. Um, do time on it. You're never happy with my work. <laughs> I'm a hard taskmaster. It's true. Since those are our basic expressions, yeah, we just have to modify one keyframe or three, I guess, if we want to change anchor point scale and opacity, and they are all down here. So let's say we make that quicker. Just take all that and move that over, and now. Nice. Or slower, maybe. Who knows? Maybe that's too, too excited. We want a really slow build. There we are. Now it's taking longer. Nice, dramatic build. Oh, now After Effects only run at that part, so let's run out with the rest. Great. Thanks, After Effects. <laughs> there we are. Yeah. So you can see. Right. And I think with that, I am pretty happy with my work. So I will. Um, work on all the other logos, because I don't think you want to uh, watch me while I do it, the exact same thing with the other logos. Yeah, no, you can do that. Mate. That's pretty boring. That's really good. You can do that. So I can do that, and I will hand it over to uh, Tony <laughs> for the next work. Illustrator stuff. So what I'm going to do is just, first of all, just uh, I had Behance open just here, so I'm going to just quit all of that stuff. And into Illustrator, so we're safe to I like see it. that. That was exactly what Sandrine said. I like it. Yeah. I don't love it. Water. Make it more interactive. I think that's what we did. <laughs> Do you know what? That's Even though, interactive. how many years ago is that hovering art director thing? Is that 2016? 2018? Was oh. it 2018? I think so. Is it that far? Yeah. Should we go in the middle, 2017? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> but it's, even though it was all that time ago, still so funny. And still so And true. weirdly on point, yeah. Yeah. So, so, so true. All right, let me know when you're ready. Yeah, I'm ready. Let's go. I'm going to actually pick up where we left off yesterday because in my excitement yesterday for being here with you guys and being sat next to Emma and we were all here, you know, yeah, very, very different experience. I got to this point here where I was talking about making an actual pattern swatch and then using that to create a brush. And I missed an, an essential step to do it. I, when I came away, I thought, why did that not work? And then I realized what the problem was. And I also said that I would unwrap and show you how to unwrap a yeah. pattern. Right, so that's exactly what I'm going to do right now. So I'm going to go to my uh, swatches just here, and we can see the pattern I've got there. I'm going to zoom in. So oh, there it is. So good. Just there. Okay. All you need to do to unwrap any pattern is drag it out onto the artboard. As long as you don't drop it onto a piece of artwork, if you drop it, if you drop it on a piece of artwork, it will just fill with that pattern. But if uh, if you drop it in the way I do, you actually get to see the pattern tile. That's how it works. And so this mm. is the pattern tile that I generated. So if I'd drawn a big shape like this one and then clicked on the pattern swatch, there it is filled up with that. So I left all these big gaps. If you watched that yesterday and if you saw that part, I left the big gaps on purpose because I just wanted this section. So now I have that pattern tile. It comes in as a group so I can ungroup it. Uh, it now says mixed objects just here so I know that it's all ungrouped. This shape in the middle here, this rectangle, this is the pattern tile. That's the thing that Illustrator uses to create a repeat. Okay, so it's just like a tile in your bathroom. You yeah. have those things and they join together. Old and dirty. <laughs> yeah, exactly, covered in, anyway, right, <laughs> paint in my, paint, yeah. <laughs> in my, in my world. But I've got these shapes just here and I've got that pattern tile and those are the things I want to work with here. So I'm going to select all of those. So I'm getting a bounding box around the whole thing. I'm then going to zoom in. I'm going to use my shape builder here. So I'm going to shift M to access that. And then I'm going to hold down the alter option key and just get rid of the stuff outside of the pattern tile. Okay, I'm going to go over to the other side just here. Now I'm going to have to zoom in because I've got that tiny wee bit just there. Get rid of that bit at the top, get rid of this bit. Okay, and then just down to this point just here and get rid of that. Okay, that's all working perfectly well. 
and then come back to this, I can go ahead and select the pattern tile, which has no no fill or stroke, delete it. <gasps> I know, shocker. Then select that artwork. Then, just as I have done before, turn that into a pattern brush, like so. There it is, that's exactly what I want. I don't need to do anything else. And by the way, it's worth mentioning that when you generate a pattern tile like this, this is the size it will be applied at with a one point stroke. It's important to know ah, that. Ah, okay. So yeah. it, you, if you need the pattern to be smaller, you either need to change the scaling inside the pattern brush options, yeah, or you need to just change the point size as it's applied. Okay, right, so that's right. the important thing to know just there. So now I've done that, I don't need that artwork anymore. I can go back to this path just here, the one that is currently filled uh, with that rather than uh, using it. And then I'll just change. Do you know what we forgot? Whoa. If you're watching this on YouTube. <gasps> Come so along and join us on behearts.net slash Adobe Live. Right. <laughs> Back to our regular sketching programming. Don't forget to save. I will also save. Uh, and save, yeah, save. do that as well. Yeah. Yeah. Done now. It's the excitement, isn't it? Yeah. Though? The fact that we're actually here. So good. I've got to be honest, apart from the work side of my trip over here, you know, out, out in town and, the, you know, having a bit of a break, while, because my new studio is nearly finished. Apart from having that, that break while that's going on, yeah, this is the best part of this trip out here. Hey. In so many ways. Even the Deutsche Museum with all of its wonders. And the astronomy, have you ever seen the astronomy exhibits down there? Three floors of it, epic. Uh, but anyway, even that. So anyway, I'm drifting off on topic. There you go, you can now see that my brush is working exactly the way I intended to intend it. So there you go, Fantastic. missing that essential step. One final thing yeah. on brushes, because yesterday we looked at the effects of art brushes being stretched along a path, yeah. and then we looked at the different way that a pattern brush was applied to a path, and there are various other things that we can do with pattern brushes. This is a pattern brush applied to a stroke just here. If I get the width tool, okay, and change that stroke, you can see that the stroke changes nicely like that. It's very, oh, that's so good. Very interesting that it does that. I'm just going to undo that. So the one final way uh, that we can do this is to make an image brush, which is basically making a pattern, but with an image. So it's slightly different because it applies slightly differently. So we'll have this one here in sort of a more, si let's get rid of this one as well. In more sciencey kind of terms, this would be what was called our control. It's the thing hmm. we know everything about. Okay, so we're not going to change anything. I've got a stroke here with that brush applied, and I'm going to turn this into an image. So I'm going to go to the object menu. I'm going to come down and choose rasterize, like so, because this has to be an image that clues in the name. I am going to make sure that any bounding area outside of it is transparent, so it will generate a ping uh, essentially here in the file, and I'll hit OK. And so now that is an image. You can see that it's targeted just there. If you look at the top of the properties panel, it says it's an image there, as it does at the top left of the control strip, just in case right. you don't have okay. the properties panel. Got it. So now I've got that, I can go ahead and make a brush with that image. Again, pattern brush, like so. Great stuff. I'm just going to say, yes, that's all fine, fine, fine. In fact, so I call this one image brush just to avoid. And actually, just so you not don't feel left out, I'm going to call this uh, image brush for Tim. Because, oh. you know, I did a couple for Emma yesterday. Stop it. Well, yeah, no, really do bad. stop it. <laughs> Brilliant. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to option drag a copy of that. Oh, there you go. This time holding down option. Uh, it's actually a good thing. So I created a copy right. of that. Now I can apply the image brush for Tim. Now as it happens, this one's worked uh, perfectly well. Let's just change that. That's to my name basically. on it. Of course it does. There you go. And there it is. Nice. Here it looks pretty much the same as the one above. Right? But it might behave differently yeah, if you try and use the width tool with it. It might not squash quite as much. Mm. There. So you can see well, it does change quite a bit actually. But sometimes, depends on the brush you're making, yeah, those are the results you'll get. So those were the things I kind of missed out yesterday in my excitement about being here. Okay, so following on from that, here are some of the other brush uh, 
tiles I've made. You can see them all down here. Remember that these would all be applied as a one point stroke. So this one, for example, right, this is its one point size. Now it's applied to a stroke at the top here, okay, but you'll see the actual size of that is half a point. If I make it one point, like so, yeah, in fact, this one here has been shrunk down, but you can see the original pattern size. That was the original pattern size just there at the top. So that's that's the important thing to know. So you have to think of the relation of the size before you actually before create, you apply it. Yeah, okay. especially if you do if you're doing it in the way uh, that we're working here, mm. when we've got a specific goal, we know it's going to fit within certain widths. Yeah, then those are the things you really need to pay attention to. Right um, for that. So yes, and there you go. That's the brushes tailed off. So what comes after brushes? Radials. <gasps> I know. We're going to print that out and cut it in live. Yes, we're going to get that. These are our bro tattoos. We're having these done later. <laughs> or maybe not. <laughs> okay, back, 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 back. All right, so let me show you how. Um, yeah, don't destroy the studio. It's brand new. <laughs> yeah. The um, so I'm going to show you how these are made. Now I I've got a couple of different ways of doing these because uh, I use a plugin uh, called Mirror Me uh, for the tiles that you've seen already. What have we got here now? What's Casino Carpet Designer? Another of your previous Casino Carpet Designer. Brilliant. Another of my previous careers. No, it's one of my future careers, uh, Joe. I think that's where we're going to. Uh, that's where. That's where I'll be going next, probably by Tuesday. But anyway, <laughs> you gamble. So, sorry, you gamble. One time, one time only. One time only, with Maddie. She made me do it. <laughs> So I'm going to show you how these these are actually made. I'm going to give you a, co a compare or contrast thing basically. And actually for this, I'm going to use uh, a new blank document so you can see the two ways. Let me show you the way I used the plugin. Of course, not everybody has access to these plugins. Yeah. Okay. So I'm going to use this, and I am going to also switch to the Mirror Me tool from my extra tools just here, and bring out this grid like so. Now I can change this grid using the bracket keys on my keyboard to get uh, however many uh, tiles I want. The reason I like this method and using this particular tool, so I'm just going to apply this to the layer now, so anything I draw on the layer will work across the tiles, is that I can draw freely inside of it and generate uh, results very, very quickly. And they work seamlessly, but I'll also show you the native Illustrator way in a moment. If I just go ahead and get uh, my blob brush here and make a few marks like so, you can see that I can draw really quickly. That's like so. cool. It works really well. You know, you can just, you can go ahead and just make different parts of your pattern and have them replicate and you can use all of the other uh, tools that you find inside of Illustrator and you can have more than one uh, grid. So when I make some of the other patterns, I'll have twice as many mm. radials on the second layer, for example, and then I compose them all together oh, at the end. Oh, well, that's and clever. And so that's how you build a more complex thing with a less right. static repeat across them. So that's of course, yeah, yeah. That's that's what the casinos hire me for, essentially. That's uh, that's what they do. But you can use, of course, all the Illustrator tools in here. You can go ahead and you can get some interesting results by sometimes using things like the spiral tool. Like so you'll see that if I go ahead and do this, remember it's gonna be reflected here and rotated around. Ooh, but if I then, I like that. Yeah, compile it as well with, or compound it by adding in um, some variable width strokes. And I'm just gonna scroll over this field. Like so, you can very quickly oh. generate a result. Right, this stream is sponsored by Street <laughs> Graphics. Street Graphics. Discount code Tony Harmer for zero percent off. Yep, yep, absolutely perfect. In fact, Nick used to give me a discount code, but it's so cheap anyway. I don't think you really need one. Well, I think it's cheap. Uh, I'm going to remove those axes. When I do that, it just becomes the regular art, like so. So that's how you can do that with that plugin. 
So you might be saying, I don't have that plugin. I don't have that plugin. See, just like that. That's yeah. exactly what you might say. How can I make patterns in a fun and exciting way? Well, well, I'll show you. Okay, so what I'm going to do, I'm just going to plant uh, some very, very basic artwork here on this artboard. So let's just go ahead and make, I'm just going to bank a bunch of shapes. I'm going to use an ellipse, so let me just deselect that. Okay, I'm going to use an ellipse just here. I'm going to make another one, just deselecting and drawing odds and ends, like so. Just there, let's do something like that. In fact, just plant a few things around here and about, just randomly. I some I have varying degrees of success. And that's art. Uh, with this. That is art. It, but what does this shape say to you, Tim? I think it's a bunny. With a hat on? Yeah. Yeah, and a pipe? Yeah. Yeah, it's a pipe shopping. Holding thing. holding an Easter egg, maybe? Yeah, possibly, yeah. Easter, Easter bunny. Yeah. Or a bowl or something. Yeah, yeah absolutely. You're very normal. <laughs> <laughs> The Rorschach test. <laughs> the Rorschach test. I've got a fish called Rorschach in my aquarium. There you go. Does it have like weird spots on it? It's got look, black. It's a white fish with black spots on it, and it's just. And if you look at it like you're, oh no, I it, think it does, it's um, looks a bit like a fish. I call I it say. really. I call it Rorschach more, more after um, not after Rorschach uh, himself, but after the um, Watchman character. Oh. Yeah. There's Rorschach. With the face there that changes with the the, the famous schedule. twin brother of the Rorschach. Rorschach, <laughs> thank you. <laughs> you are correct. <laughs> so how am I going to achieve this properly, or, or, or how I consider it to be proper? <clears throat> okay, what I'm going to do is I am going to go to the repeats, and you can do this in Illustrator on the iPad as well, kids. It's exciting. Okay, so clearly a bunny detective. Uh, Oliver's correct. Uh, so I'm going to choose here mirror. So I get a mirror plane, like so, and then I can go ahead and move this into place. And I can just do that until I get an interesting shape. I can also rotate things around, so you can do loads of different things with that. Just play with it, it doesn't yeah. hurt to do that. Now I could also, I'm going to get my eraser tool just here, so Shift E for that. I'm going to double click on the eraser, I'm going to go to size, nine point, and I'd like the variation to be, you know, pretty much the maximum of that. That's great. Oh, in fact, that's set to random just there. I'm using a pressure tablet, so I'm going to just ooh, select pressure and then I should better get that to the maximum. When you set it like that in Illustrator, by the way, it doesn't matter if you change the brush size, it will always go to that value, so the maximum no. of that value. In honesty, I'd prefer it if the Illustrator team actually changed that to a percentage it kind of makes more sense to me, but anyway. Well, maybe someone from Adobe is listening. You never know. You never know, who knows. So I'm just using the eraser here to carve bits of this away, like so, drawing like so. There we go, something like that. Now at the moment, it just looks like, well, nothing particularly uh, exciting. Let's just zoom in, but, ooh, interesting, the zoom tool would not work then for some reason. So I'm doing this, it's not doing a great job of that pressure because I'm, there you go. The problem's in the chair, not in the computer. <laughs> so just making, really, I'm just enjoying just pushing the cursor around and making some pretty random marks within this shape. But the real fun part comes in a second when I've had enough of doing that, which is around about now. Yeah, I'm kind of done with doing that. So I'm going to go to my selection tool, double click outside of it. So now that's a piece of art. I can then go ahead with that selected, my piece of art with its grid on it or its mirror and go to object, repeat radial, because this is the thing that people forget is you can stack the, they're in effect you can stack the effects together that's good yeah so from there i like this i can then i can change the center so these icons i'm going to zoom in just at the bottom here these icons here they 
affect the distribution of the shapes along the path. So if you didn't want them to complete a full circle, if you wanted them to just go halfway, you could drag one of these out and you can see that shapes are being removed at that particular point. So you're setting the limits essentially of where the repeat is occurring. There's loads of potential for this because I could then start a second repeat on that, you know, or a second radial. Uh -huh. This icon it's a whole at the top new, here, whole new world. It is a whole new world. <laughs> <laughs> this icon at the top here, this very teeny weeny dot just there, that allows me to change the center offset. Yeah, so I can move these outwards, I can also move them inwards, I can also roll them around a bit if I want to. But you can see how this is starting to build very, very quickly. I can then change the number of items in that repeat. And all this is native Illustrator. Native Illustrator, yeah. No Love plugin it. required at all to do this. You can just go ahead and use that as is. Yeah, and you can drill down into the shapes. So if you thought, oh, this looks really nice apart from, you know, those double peaks there, I'm not very, very keen on those right. double peaks. You can double click once, that takes you inside the radial. What's inside the radial? The mirror. So you can double click on that and then you're into the mirror repeat. It tells you these things up in the breadcrumb trail, okay, at the top of the screen just here, and I can now start to work on that and think, oh, okay, I want to resolve that by, I'm gonna spin the whole thing, it's like a kaleidoscope now, crazy. By creative cloud. By Ooh. creative cloud. <laughs> yeah. And I might think, you know, I'm kinda of happy with that. That's, that's interesting. I could also get my blob brush, shift B, to do that, and I think that might work slightly better if I actually added in some extra shapes like so, and you could you don't need a tablet to do this. Handy if you've got one. But you could do this with a mouse, and you could just do this with regular shapes. You could kind or a trackpad. You could do all of that stuff. Of course, you're going to struggle to do the pressure on the strokes. You know, even if I wanted to do coloring in here on a part of it, or just literally scratch away at it, I could do it, or draw whatever I wanted to do in there, and I can do that for as long as it retains its live status, which it will do until I expand it. So in the middle there, I might want to erase some things, for example, you see when it's overlit like that, it's very, very interesting with all of those extra uh, paths. But I can go ahead and do that. Once I'm happy with it, if I want to expand it, I don't have to. After Effects will just read this layer as an image. So if I wanted to bring that in, or use it inside of another Illustrator document, it will just read this as an image and work with it from there. Fair enough. But yeah, so just play with that as you want. In fact, I'm going to do that. I'm going to save this as, a, well, let's call this Tim Radial, which is your racing driver name. It's a new nickname. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to Tim Radial, uh, like so. Groovy. We've got Tim Radial. I'm going to close that document. I'm going to create another new blank document and then Shift Command or Shift Control P. I'm going to bring in. Tim Radial, like so. Yeah, so there it is. Now I could have actually done that with just the artwork, so I'm gonna do that again. Let me just bring that in one more time and pay attention to what I'm doing. Just here, I'm gonna turn on show import options because you could see it was coming in at the document size. So yeah. in a similar way as you need to pay attention to retaining layer sizes uh, in After Effects sometimes. Yeah, when yeah. you're doing a composition, if you actually want, don't want them to be the whole comp size. Uh, so if I just do place, this is where I get the options. Now media is effectively the document size. Here, if I change it to art, you can now see I'll get a slightly different preview here. We go to art and drop that just there. You might want to resize that a bit, like so. And then we could try and maybe do a little bit of a pattern with that. So let's make another repeat. Again, this is something that you can do in Illustrator natively. What's going on now? Of course, he's just saying, I didn't know Tim is a racing driver, and Oliver says, neither did Tim. Yeah. <laughs> Actually, I, I am a racing driver, yeah. yeah. My um, vehicle of choice is the electric scooter. It is. Tim had an accident. <laughs> Small one. I'm fine. He is fine, but his leg is not, not fine. 
is like it's very sore. If you use XD and you use the repeat grid options in XD, you will find these controls to be nothing similar to those apart from these little handles just down here where you can do yeah, the spread enough. of the pattern. But can you see how easy it is to yeah. do that? The only thing you don't have here is you don't have a brick offset for I this, do you? Just about to ask yeah. that. Yeah. Uh, or do you actually? I'm just going to refresh my memory because over in the side here, right, we've got the grid type, yeah, and so we can change this brick by row. Ooh, and we there can do brick we are. by column. So now we can go ahead and we can tighten that pattern up. So that I think is going to need. That's pretty good on the uh, horizontal just there. We've got these widgets on the side, and we can tighten that up. Now we can even introduce. Ooh, I like that. Yeah, so you're starting to get that nice tight overlap. I'm earning the big bucks at the same time with the new casino carpet. <laughs> you know, this one will get shipped off this afternoon. Here's my here's my or seventies wallpaper or seventies flocked wallpaper. <laughs> well, I remember a friend called Helen who used to do that. Now I do wonder if we could somehow then in After Effects make in them rotate individually. That would be fun. You could if you could get a hold of the individual instances, but you could yeah. also, could you not also do uh, do like a, um, you can do a repeater, can't you? You can add a repeater. Yeah, but I think that's... You might need to use two, two, two instances of a repeater and an offset. I will try that right now. Yeah, why, go why, ahead. Why do it. Yeah, yeah, just... yeah, 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 yeah. I'm going to just have a quick look at the. Uh, now that's going back some time. Tell me about it, uh, Kirsty. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody in this room knows more about that. Than I do. Uh, Joe really wants an electric scooter. Uh, they are fun. To, they are fun to ride. Uh, technically, still illegal on roads in the UK, though. And actually, Tim, not Tim, Joe, uh, you'll get points on your license if uh, if the officer deems. It necessary to uh, prosecute you. So that's kind of funny that Sharon, who you know, my wife, uh, a former police officer, bought me an electric scooter and I went out and enjoyed it on the cycle paths locally and then she said, oh, by the way, if you go out on a road on it, uh, you run the risk of you you losing your license. <laughs> Deep joy. <laughs> and also take it from me, um, be very careful and don't underestimate uh, the height of um, curbs the if curb, you run over yeah, them. Yeah, that's what happened. And yeah. if you have, wear protective equipment. Yes. Especially around your knees. Yeah. Just saying. I, I don't think electric scooters will be, will be uh, a problem in the UK for too much longer because there's so many places in cities where you can hire like uh, Lime, which you can do here in Germany yeah. as well, and other scooters. So, yeah. Like you can't walk a mile without seeing like 10 of them. Yeah. It's, it's, good, it's, it's great um, if you need them, but... Yeah. Munich is so good for the cycle lanes. So good. Uh, what I'm going to do here, just, just for giggles, is I'm actually going to try something here. So I've got this grid repeat. I'm going to group it. Yeah. So I've turned that into a group, which has turned it inside of Illustrator into a separate entity, so a separate object just there. Okay, and I'm going to add a new fill. So this is where I go into my appearance panel because I'm big on the appearances, mm -hmm. as almost everybody knows. Um, Actually, I'm big on the appearance panel because I'm sitting right in front of it. Hang on, let me just move the camera over. <laughs> okay, all right, sorry. Oh, yeah, of course. I, I am the appearance yeah. panel, look at I, me. I can, look, I can pat you on the head. Oh, 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 I missed my opportunity there. I was going to do, 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 You know, you can do that in real life, right? You can just reach over. I could, actually. But it's just true. Now, Otherwise, here's what, no. otherwise they will in the studio tomorrow. There, there will be trouble. Oh no, that would be bad. Uh, now you can see that at the moment, the fill that I've added over the top here is only affecting the drawn art underneath it. That is something I could exploit if I wanted to. So I could do things to change the appearance yeah, of the artwork quite simply like that. But what if I actually wanted that to be a rectangle? Well, there's two different ways I could do it. One involves me using a Pathfinder, but the other, much simpler one, involves me using the Convert to Shape effect, yeah. just here. So I can say Rectangle. So convert this fill only to a rectangle. Okay, and what I can do, you can see my units are set to millimeters just here. I'm gonna zoom in on that panel so it's easier uh, for you to see. And look, cancel Tony. <laughs> uh, and I can type 1920px, tab through, okay, and 1080px, 
Yeah, that's not for punks, it's for pixels. Yeah. Okay, and you see that Illustrator converts it to my current unit of measurement. And I can just go ahead. In fact, I should say they're absolute. That would have been a much better choice. Yeah, so let me do that again. 1920px, 1080px, absolute. There we go. And it will do it from the center. Hit OK. There's my fill just on top of there. That's interesting. Oh, I'm zoomed in on it. Uh, interesting result just there. So I'm just going to click back on that and just make sure that I did that properly. And let's go ahead and do that because that should be covering the entire thing. Very, very strange. I've and never tried doing this, by the way, on a pattern grid before, so it's interesting territory. I could correct that with a transform, but that's not the, the point I'm going for here. I could then change the blend mode of this so I could get it so it could multiply on the layer beneath, or I could change that to screen, which had a different effect on the layer beneath, perhaps, uh, if it was lighter, or I could do overlay and then change the opacity, all of those things would change. I've got loads and loads of different options. So there you are. That's how you can create all of those pattern types nice. using just that. Moving on then, how are we doing? Oh, it's so good. We've, have we still got 45 minutes left? No, 15. Oh, okay, cool. <laughs> Obviously, and turbo time is and my everyone. strong point. So, we're going to need some suits uh, here of, and in fact, because we're going to use a few different things, I have gone to Adobe Stock to get these uh, right. cards here. So I've taken these from Adobe Stock uh, because, you know, I am on holiday. Yeah. So when I'm not filming and when I'm not in here, I want to be going out and experiencing Munich. So I thought, Do you know what, I'm not going to sit in my room and draw these yeah. things because it's lovely outside. So I stayed... Uh, left that well alone. So, I want to recolor these, however, so they are more sympathetic you know, or more in keeping with my brushes here. So what I'm going to do is, I'm going to zoom in on this. So I'm going to pick some of these things. I'm just going to go ahead and option drag some of those up. Can anybody spot, it's on screen right now, the giveaway that tells you that I did this. There's a giveaway, there's a clue. Sandrine will know. She'll know what the giveaway is in these patterns. There's a Tony trademark giveaway in there. Can you spot it? I mean, the pen? It's the pen. Yeah? Yeah. Okay. It's the, not that that's exclusively my domain, of course, <laughs> but you know. I'm I mean, gonna click. To, you know, be, to be fair, you invented the pen. I, I did, yes, back in the day. I did, yeah. 11.21, yeah. Or was it nearly half past 11 actually in morning? <laughs> <laughs> so I'm gonna to go to my align panel here. I've got a key object selected. I'm gonna set the spacing here to uh, zero and then click that again. That's really good. They can all align to the center. You'll see why I'm doing this in a moment. So I'm just trying to avoid, oh, look at that, they join perfectly. Whoever did this was, uh, was someone. Let's go ahead and uh, do exactly the same here, key object. Get those joined together. That's fine. I was kind of hoping to avoid getting any white space in there. Let's actually, it's not going to be a real thing, so there's nothing to stop me bringing that to the front and dropping it there. There you go. Well, in fact, one of those is re repeating anyway. So let's do that. I'm then going to make a screenshot of that. So I'm using uh, the Max native screen capture here. You can use whatever screen capture. Uh, mechanism you want to do it but this makes it nice and easy for me to capture this and move it to my clipboard okay so you'll see uh, just here I have the option to go to my clipboard hit return so now I've got that as an image I can go back to my cards here I'm going to paste that down as an image then I'm going to use the magic wand here. So Y is the shortcut for magic wand, Y for Yankee. And I'm going to go ahead and click on just a red here. And you can see with my tolerance, if I just double click this, just like in Photoshop, I have a tolerance here. The default value of 32 is capturing all of the various different reds I have in there. 
So now they're selected, I'm going to tap I on my keyboard to get the eyedropper. Hold down Shift because I'm selecting from an image. Click on that red and you can see that red has changed. I can then just go ahead and repeat that. So let's go for the yellows next. Let's do that. That seems to have all of those. I'll get my eyedropper, hold down Shift and I think I'll go for... Let's go for something like that. That looks pretty good. Let's try maybe something a bit darker. You know, I think I favour the more darker uh, one just there. Let's try something else that's too close to the original. Let's do this one here. Yeah, I think I'm going to go with this one. I like it. And then finally, I'm going to go for the blue here. So I'm going to choose a piece of the representative blue with my magic wand. Eyedropper. Let's zoom out. Yeah, come back at this point, hold down shift, and I think I'm going to go for this darker one. There you go, nice and contrasty. So you can see how I've changed all of those, and they are much more uh, in keeping with the pattern tiles that I've, I've designed here. So they should stitch together beautifully when they come into play in there. Of course, in the, for each one, we're only going to see the top half yeah. of those. And I think what I'm going to do a little bit of work I might do later on, like this evening, or perhaps, or, or depending what the weather's like, if it wasn't a storm like last night, um, then uh, I might actually add in a few of the mnemonic elements to that too. So that would be really, really good. What are we at, 10 minutes, I think? Is that about right? Yeah, yeah. and the good news is there's a storm coming up later today. Is <laughs> yeah. In that case, I'll definitely do these later. Guess who's spending yeah. the night in I'm the off, hotel? I'm off down the moleskin shop. <laughs> I'm not going to go to the zoo this afternoon, so no. no, 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 I think I'll just go up the hill to do a bit more film, but that'll be it. Uh, so finally, I think for today then, is this, uh, is the, uh, the barrel uh, part for the beginning of uh, the movie, of course, I mean, that's the important I think you mean the camera shutter. The camera shutter the aperture. is what we've done, the aperture, yeah, yeah, the iris. The iris, there we are. That was what I was looking for. Originally in the Bond films, a barrel, ours is an iris, absolutely. So that's the, the thing I'm going to work on just here. So let's go for another uh, untitled document here. In fact, if I do a new document like so, uh, Shift O to get my artboard tool, and what I'm going to do is just change the uh, width here to let's make this 500 just there arbitrarily, and we'll make this 500 also. There we go. So we've got a nice square artboard. Not that it has to be square, it's yeah. kind of kind of nice that it is. I think my original iris there is much, much larger. I'm going to start with the center. Just here, I'm going to draw this outwards. Now, I've done this two or three uh, different ways. I've done it with um, using uh, the polar grid tool. I've done it using a couple of circles, which is the way I'm doing that right now. So I've got two circles just there. The man with a golden SLR. Yes, the only thing it shoots is photos. Ba -ba. He charges a million a shot. And yes, I do. <laughs> oh, what did Sandrine say about global colors just there? Could you turn the figure card colors into global and change them? Yes, you, you could now because they've all been unified. But before Sandrine, they were not all the same color. Yeah, they were various different yellows in their various different blues. They're all slightly different. That's why I used the magic wand, because the magic wand had a tolerance, which meant I could broaden the, uh, the selection from there. So all I need here is I need a, a line basically moving out to the iris, ideally uh, around about 30 degrees is good. I have two ways of doing that. I can either draw it with the line tool or my preferred way of doing it, if in the way that I actually work, if you're interested, is to use another tool from Astute Graphics, the Tangent Line Tool, because that allows me to draw a line that is uh, a tangent between uh, two paths. I can do that uh, in a few different ways. It's actually working with a tangent with that circle um, just there. So that's the way I would normally do it. I know I just need to switch that on to enable it to be done, but let's do it the way that would do it otherwise, so something like this, around about there. Okay, I would then uh, tap R on my keyboard to get the rotate tool, go to the center of the document just here, because that's what I lined everything up for in the first place. 
hold down the alter option key and click that does two things okay it sets the transformation point to the center it also opens up the rotate dialog and I guess I want to do 360 divided by 8 just there I'm going to hit copy but I'm going to do that using the keyboard option return to do that and then command D or control D to get those iris shapes like that but of course these actually do look like iris blades but yeah. we need that slight curve to them so I'm going to do a bit of a cheat I'm going to select all of that all of those lines actually I don't want the circles just here just the line segments I'm then going to get my um, warping tools so shift R is the quickest way to get to the root of the warping tool so that's the actual warp tool itself but we've got this tool here the twirl tool okay I'm going to come out onto the artboard like so and I'm going to change the size of the brush so to change these kind of brushes because with other brushes you can use the bracket keys just like you can in Photoshop these kind of brushes or these brushes you need to hold down option and shift so okay. option to change the uh, size shift to keep it proportional I'm actually going to make it larger than that set like so go to the center of the artboard there more or less there we go there we are my smart guide helping me out if I click now you can see it's done it too much oh, it's too much but it's good can I undo it's a quick way to do it yeah what I'm going to do is double click on the twirl tool okay set to 10% you know that's that should be I think I've just held the, the cursor down just a little bit too long. Is the hovering art director about to say something? No. No? Okay. Maybe. <laughs> I think he would say, I like it, I don't love it. I Let's like see. it, I don't Make it less stocky. <laughs> I don't see the fun in it. Fine. Oh, oh, crikey, that went way, 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 way. I think I'm going to just go ahead and use a bit of gentle uh, pressure here. This time with feeling? Oh, still... But anyway, you can the see. Illustrator's too excited. Illustrator, it's not. It's <laughs> not it's just Illustrator. It's me. I'm excited about it. What do you think? What do these people think about these two-hour streams? What do you think, people? Well, these people, lovely community. Do they love it? Well, today is not a two-hour stream. It's tomorrow. Oh yes, yeah, it's a 90-minute stream, isn't it? Hello. Yeah, well, we'll ask you tomorrow what you feel about the two-hour <laughs> stream. But how do you feel about the 90-minute stream on a Tuesday? Well, that's uh, different. So I am. Oh, I was changing that angle. Oh, I want to change that intensity change the twirl rate that's what I'm after and in fact if I go negative it will go in the direction I want bizarrely it keeps changing that um, the size just there which it shouldn't do unless I'm not there you go so I can just mess with that now that's actually not too bad very very close let's just go one more time let's go to that twirl rate and bring that to maybe minus five, six, something in that ballpark. Weird that the size of the brush is changing. Shouldn't be doing that. But there we go. Maybe Illustrator doesn't like it because it's as large as a document. There we go. Ah, yes. We so we're just a little bit of messing around. We've got there. I can then, of course, select all of that good stuff just there. Turn it into a live paint group. Option Command X or Object Live Paint Make. Tap K for my live paint bucket, and then I can go ahead and I'm just going to fill all of these with a gradient. I can then mess with the gradient afterwards. So if I get my gradient tool here, so this is just going to do me a linear gradient for now. Let's go ahead and change that to a radial gradient. In fact, it's filled all of those for me. It's made my, made my job even easier actually, because now what I can do is I can just use my arrow keys to cycle around in there if I get my live paint bucket again or even use my live paint selection tool shift L select that middle segment hit delete then I can go ahead nice get that expand it so live paint expand or go expand just there and it's just a matter of just working through each one of those using the gradient annotator to move them around and there you go and we have some very positive feedback as a total beginner this is some next level magic for me oh thank well, you lucas you should definitely join us uh, tomorrow too yeah because we have two hours of adobe live and of course the stream yesterday as well yeah so um racking up the the clock this week aren't we yeah yeah well since you're here anyway 
I thought like Tony was just about to have a vacation, like sightseeing in Munich and bit of filming. That was it. And eating a restaurant, and we're like, "Well, you're here. Yeah. Why don't you just you know, do film right. club?" And that's how we got here. Anyway, mm. all right. All good. Do we want right. to do another thing or look at tomorrow? Because we could, of course, always add like another ten minutes. Well, I think we're kind of okay on that because moving right. the gradient around is not not too much fun for every everyone to watch. So, <laughs> but the um, tomorrow, of course, is where we bring it all together. So tomorrow, you'll see all of the various different strokes that we've built actually in After Effects. Uh, then you'll see things stitched together, and of course, the all important soundtrack. Yes, still it. working on that. Um, but I've heard the preview; it's really good. A custom soundtrack, as always. Yeah. Uh, no singing. No. Couldn't convince Tony. No. No, I'm not very good at doing a Chris Cornell, to be honest. <laughs> All right. <laughs> but with that, thank you very much, as yes. always, for joining us here on Adobe Live from yes. the studio in Munich, in person. <laughs> Just hands. <laughs> Um, we will be back tomorrow, same time, same place, yes. for another two hours this time. Yes. So strap in. Hopefully you have something, uh, some snacks, maybe. Yeah, uh, popcorn. Get the popcorn out. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. It's a film club after all. Yeah. And uh, if you have, of course, any questions, then don't hesitate and reach out to us over Discord. The link is below the video. Um, and yeah, that's all from us today. Any last words you want to extend to the community before we... Oh, well, I've just got to say, I've just seen Neil's uh, Neil's comment inside the uh, inside the chat there. John, just over halfway, best forty five minutes of my life. Wow! And <laughs> epic. screenshot. Yeah, there we go. Absolutely. Oh, thanks, Angus. Yeah, no, lovely everybody to see here. I hope you're really, really looking forward to uh, seeing what we do tomorrow. I know that I'm looking forward to be back in here and uh, and doing exactly that. And also for it seeing as there's a storm coming in tonight, and I won't be able to do anything else. I'm looking forward to seeing their drawing. <laughs> Think bigger, but keep it simple. There you go. I think that's wise words. <laughs> wise words. So thank you, as always. Okay. And see you tomorrow, same time, Take same care. place, here on Behance. Bye. Bye.